As you are writing your web applications, you should always keep security in mind. Now, we have already protected ourselves from SQL injection attacks because we use parameters in all of our SQL statements, but we haven't done anything to protect ourselves from cross-site request forgery attacks. But thankfully, ASP.NET has a very simple to use solution for this particular attack. It basically requires us to call two methods, one inside of our form, the other inside of our HTTP handler. So let's start by opening up our accounts.cshtml. And inside of our form, we want to call the first method. It's on the anti-forgery class, and it's called getHTML. This is going to output a hidden input element that contains an anti-forgery token. And then we want to use this anti-forgery class inside of our HTTP handler. So let's open up account handler, and inside of the process request method, we want to use that same anti-forgery class, but now we want to use its validate method, and that is going to validate the anti-forgery token. Now, technically, we can call this validate method anywhere within this method, but I prefer to do it at the very beginning because if the request is not valid, I don't want to do anything else. And so now all that we need to do is go to our other files like post.cshtml and inside of this form, we want to once again use anti-forgery and then call the getHTML method. And then inside of our post handler, in the process request method, we use anti-forgery. Now here we need a using statement for system.web.helpers, but then we will call the validate method and that will validate our anti-forgery token. Now the validate method will throw an exception if the anti-forgery token cannot be validated. As you can see from IntelliSense, it returns void. So if the validation passes, then everything works just fine. But if validation fails, then an exception is thrown. So let's go to the role.cshtml file. Inside of our form, we once again want to call the antiforgery.getHTML method. And then inside of the role handler, we will add the call to antiforgery.validate. And then finally, we need to do this inside of our tags. So open up tag.cshtml. We will call antiforgery.getHTML. And then inside of the tag handler's process request method, we will call antiforgery.validate. Well, let's run our application and let's see this work. Now, in actuality, we're not going to see anything special. It's just going to behave as it has before. But later on, we can remove the anti-forgery token from one of the forms, and we can see the exception that gets thrown. So after logging in, let's go to our post, and let's edit this first post. And let's just modify the content. Let's say that this has been edited. And then let's submit and we run into an exception that the input string was not in a correct format. And let's see what the problem is. It is our tags. Once again, we have a problem here. So let's just fix this once and for all. Let's first of all, not use the null coalescing operator here. Whenever we retrieve the value of post tags, we will just get that value, even if it's null. And then we will check to see if it's not null. And if it is, then we will split that value on the comma and then only select the values there. So let's first of all, create an I enumerable of int called tags, and we can go ahead and initialize that as an int array. And then we will need to check to see if our post tags is not null or empty. So we will use the is null or empty method, but we will use the not operator here. And if it's not null or empty, then we will split our post tags and assign that resulting I enumerable of int to the tags variable. And so let's run the application again, and that should fix that problem. We should never have a problem with our tags anymore. So let's go to admin, let's log in once again. And after logging in and going to post, let's edit. And let's see, the content was edited, so let's just remove this, and then let's submit. And 
we see that everything worked just fine. But let's go to our post.cshtml. Let's remove the call to antiforgery.getHTML. And then let's go back to edit. Now, whenever we submit, we are going to get an exception because our anti-forgery token could not be validated. And you can see that it is looking for a specific field, underscore, underscore, request verification token is not present. Now we obviously want this verification token, so let's go back to post.cshtml and let's undo that change so that the anti-forgery token gets put into the HTML. If we go back to the form and refresh, then we can look at the HTML and you can see that here we have this input name and then request verification token. The type is hidden and then you see this insanely complex hash of a value. But it's good that it is insanely complex because that cannot be replicated without a whole lot of luck. And so with that very, very simple change, we are now protecting ourselves from cross-site request forgeries.